Hello from Media and Technologies, and welcome to our Imaging 101 series, short subject webinars on the fundamentals of imaging in clinical trials. In this session, Response Evaluation Criteria in Solid Tumors, Resist 1.1, you will learn about the most commonly used response criteria in oncology clinical trials, Resist 1.1. In oncology, response to treatment is assessed using images of the patient under study. Imaging biomarkers are extracted to follow the progress of the disease. A biomarker is a biological characteristic objectively measured and evaluated as the indicator of normal or pathological processes. One of the main examples of biomarker is the body temperature. If it is too high or too low, we know that there is something wrong. It has been proven and validated on patients and is now widely used. An imaging biomarker is a biological characteristic that is detectable on an image. An imaging biomarker can be either qualitative, I can see the presence of diffuse disease, yes or no answer, or it can be quantitative, and in this case we will get an objective measure, such as the size of the nodule. Imaging biomarkers can serve as surrogate endpoints in a clinical trial. Surrogate endpoints are substituted for true clinical endpoints, such as death of the patient, after rigorous qualification and validation process. Using a true clinical endpoint such as death requires too much time and a large number of patients. So instead of using true clinical endpoints, we use surrogate endpoints, and that greatly reduces the time needed to determine therapeutic benefits. How do we assess treatment response? We use response criteria, which are composed of metrics. For example, distance in millimeters, plus a choice of biomarker for example, the size of the tumor, and a set of rules and limits to structure the range of elements being assessed. Response criteria are used to objectively measure tumor response or disease progression after treatment. Response criteria may include anatomical biomarkers, such as changes in tumor size, but can also use functional biomarkers. For example, changes in physiological factors, such as the measure of glucose metabolism in PET scans, the measure of hypoxia of a tumor, or the angiogenesis. Response criteria allow uniform reporting of data among sites, readers, and labs, and are very important for the comparison of clinical trial results across trials, sites, and countries, and help reduce the variability among readers. Here is an example of response criteria involving biomarkers metrics and rules. RESIST 1.1 Response Criteria for Solid Tumors For RESIST 1.1, the metric is the longest diameter in millimeters, the biomarker is the size of the tumor, and the rule is how many millimeters the tumor has to be in order to be a part of the study. Limits include the maximum number of five tumors studied per patient, involving only two max per organ. These criteria are used to classify the patients into various categories of response. Complete response, or CR, if there is a total disappearance of all lesions. Partial response, or PR, if only a partial decrease stable disease, or SD, or progression, PD, if the tumors grew. The response criteria will classify patients into CR, PR, SD, PD, and this will be how it is reported in the trial. RESIST was originally published in 2000 and revised in 2009. It is the most widely used set of criteria for assessing response in solid tumors. It is the only one for now that is validated by the FDA. This chart is a visual representation of RESIST. There is a limitation of five lesions per patient and two lesions per organ in that patient. We report the longest dimension of each lesion under study and record the total dimension of the tumor burden as the sum of all diameters. In this slide, the patient has three different tumors that are followed since they are greater than 10 millimeters the minimum for target lesions to be quantitatively followed. The tumor burden will be the sum of these three lesion diameters. In the second row, you see the formation of a new lesion in week 6. For RESIST 1.1, any new lesion present will classify the patient into progressive disease. In the last image, you can see the progression of non-target lesions, called non-target since they are too small to be studied quantitatively, but they are checked qualitatively. If there is unequivocal progression, as we see here, then the patient is classified as progressive disease, or PD. This is the decision tree for RESIST at baseline. First we see if the lesions are measurable. 
in other words, greater than 10 millimeters for target lesions to be quantified, and has to be greater than 15 millimeters in the short axis for lymph nodes. These limits are precise and have been tested and validated. This is the difference between lesions and nodes. Some of the lesions are too small or complex and are then classified as non-measurable lesions. The measurable lesions now become the target lesions, which can be a maximum of five in a patient and two per organ in that patient. The sum of the longest diameter of these target lesions is then termed as tumor burden. The non-measurable lesions are still followed but qualitatively and are classified as non-target lesions. These are non-measurable lesions and hence there isn't any quantitative metric. The evaluation of the non-target lesions is recorded by the reader if there is any unequivocal changes in these non-target tumors. This is a visual example of the RESIST 1.1 criteria. Target lesions are quantitatively assessed. The sum of the longest diameters gives us 159 millimeters as the tumor burden. Non-target lesions are qualitatively assessed. They are either small lesions or effusions, bone lesions. All these lesions are qualitatively assessed by the reader. These lesions are tracked to see if there is progression of the disease. The follow-up of these non-target lesions can be a source for reader variability since they are only qualitatively assessed. As we described, here are the four different types of classification in this criteria. Complete response, partial response, stable disease, or progressive disease. The tumor can be a complete response if it disappears. It can be partial response if it has shrunk at least 30% from baseline to the time point under study. The tumor burden can be roughly the same size and will lead to a stable disease classification. If the SLD, sum of longest diameters, increases more than 20% from the nadir, then it is considered progressive disease. The nadir is the time point for which the tumor burden was defined as the smallest. Progressive disease is when there is a 20% increase between baseline and the time point under study. You can see the progression of a tumor here from baseline to time point 3. The nadir here would be the time point where the tumor burden would be the lowest, hence at time point 1. Again, tumor burden is the size of tumors in the body and is sometimes also referred to as tumor load or sum of longest diameters. This slide shows the non-target lesions response. These lesions are only followed qualitatively by the reader. The image on the left is the baseline, whereas the one on the right is the time point under study. In both examples, you can see the increase in tumor size from one time point, left, to the other, right. Therefore, it is recorded in both cases as unequivocal progression. This means that both cases would be classified as progressive disease, or PD. For RESIST 1.1, any new lesions at any time point is a sign of PD. In some cases, a PET scan can be used to verify whether the new lesion is malignant or not. RESIST has some limitations due to its rules that carry some subjectivity, which can lead to inter-reader variability. For example, issues can come up with regards to reporting new lesions or the progression of non-target lesions. This carries subjectivity. RESIST is based on the anatomical tumor size and therefore does not take into account tumor cavitation. If the tumor has changed on the inside, but the outside remains the same, RESIST will not be able to report it. Also, this response criteria does not take into account metabolic function of the tumor, which can be monitored using a PET scan. RESIST also does not take into account blood flow parameters. This concludes our quick tour of RESIST 1.1. We hope you were able to learn more about how this response criteria are used in oncology clinical trials. Thank you for joining us for this Imaging 101 class. If you would like to learn more about median technologies or to watch the rest of our Imaging 101 series, please visit www.mediantechnologies.com.